What is up guys, MKBHD here and I am back with another microphone test video for you guys. So today I'm testing out this guy, or this guy, the Audio-Technica AT2035, as first requested by our viewer, Swifty Ice Gamer. So really quickly, this is an XLR condenser microphone, which means it does require a full 48 volts of phantom power to work. What that means is this microphone will not work plugging directly into your computer, and it will also not work with an XLR to USB cable. The way I'm connecting this microphone to my computer is using the Scarlett Solo USB audio interface with full 48 volts phantom power on, and my microphone input gain is set at about 50%. Okay, and if you are interested Interested in this microphone it'll set you back about hundred and fifty dollars and as per usual link in the description let's go ahead and talk about what you get in the box obviously you're gonna get the microphone you get this nice little shock mount you get a plastic version of the 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter you get a really nice padded carrying pouch then you get some documentation and a one-year warranty. So just like all the other 20 series microphones, the build quality of this thing is pretty awesome. It has an all-metal construction, a nice metal grill, and some really nice substantial weight to it. But unlike the AT2020s, this does have two options on the back of the microphone. The first one is a 10 decibel pad, which helps when miking loud sound sources like a guitar amp. And the other is a bass roll off, which just cuts a little bit of the low frequencies below 80 hertz to help with low frequency rumbles. The shock mount is all plastic, but it feels like a relatively sturdy plastic. So I'm not worried about this breaking. And in order to actually connect it, you just push this right in there there's no clip or anything like that it just fits right in there so here is a quick look at the specification sheet you can tell that this has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz which is pretty much all you could ask for and it has a cardioid polar pattern okay so now i'm going to go ahead and spin the microphone around to determine what the actual polar pattern is and how the frequency response changes as we move into different orientations around the microphone's capsule Okay, now I am banging on the keyboard directly behind the microphone to determine how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. Now I am one foot away from the 2035. Now I'm about two feet away from the 2035. Now I'm about four feet away from the AT2035 XLR microphone. <laughs> Huge domains is a bunch of shitheads. They stole podcastage.com. So overall, I think the sound is just freaking awesome on this thing. I thought it sounded great on all the instruments. I thought it sounded great on the voice. I thought it did amazing at eliminating background noise. Just all around a great microphone. So if you're gaming and you're clickety clickety clacking away on your keyboard, I think this might be a good option. It will be a more expensive option, but I think you do get what you pay for. All right, guys. Well, I guess that will do it. If you have any more questions about this microphone, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. If you found this fun, interesting, or helpful, thumbs up. If you thought it sucked and it was lacking something, give me a thumbs down and let me know what information that I missed so I can add it in future videos. And lastly, if you're interested in this microphone or you want to vote for the microphones you want reviewed next, or if you want to follow me on social media, links to everything in the description down below. And that will do it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you all later. Bye.